So you're searching for some JL Audio Amp Dyno reviews. Check YouTube, do a search. Top three videos here, you see the XD series and the Slash series. Well, yeah, we've tested those before, but what about the HD series? We decided to pick up one of these HD series from JL Audio. These have been around since around 2008. They use the RIPS technology and the power supply. They have a compact design. They can also be stacked on top of each other for a cleaner install. But today we're going to look at the HD 1200 slash one, which is the largest amp in the group as far as wattage output goes. This is a monoblock amp. So let's unbox it, see what's inside the box. And we'll talk about it a little bit here. You can see here's the amplifier. Comes nicely packed in the plastic. The logo is not on there on the top. And the reason they don't put it on is so for mounting options, you can put it on one way or the other, rotate it around depending on how you have your amps mounted. So here's the amp, 10.74 or 273 millimeters wide by 8.29 or 211 tall by 1.93 or 49 millimeters thick for the height. Just behind the metal plate here on the front of the amplifier, you can see the different adjustments and the status LED on the left crossover off and on 12 or 24 db the filter frequency input sensitivity you have low or high input voltage infrasonic filter off or on which is kind of interesting it's 30 hertz off or on it doesn't allow you to adjust that frequency on the other end we have the power plug and rca inputs and outputs and the rcas are very nice these are the tiffany style just to the right of that we have the remote level control but it's not in the box J Audio wants $34.99 for this remote on an $1,100 amp. Are you serious? I don't like this so much. Did you see that? What? The speaker connector on the amp is very similar to the power and ground connector. I'll show it here. You can see the way it connects into the amplifier, kind of plugs in and it accepts eight gauge speaker wire. Here's the power and ground, and I use one alt welding cable, which fits. It says two alt car audio cable, but look how close they are. Wish they would have separated them out a little bit and put the remote in between in the middle, but they didn't. Um, but when you hook it up, you can notice how it adds to the dimensions of the amp. Just so you know, for installation purposes, you will need some extra space around the terminals. All right, so first up, we're gonna test the amp at eight ohms, 1% THD, 40 hertz. It's not rated anywhere in the manual at this ohm load. Uh, it is rated consistently from 1.5 to four ohms. We said, let's try eight. You see, we get 631 watts at 14.24 volts. And we pulled 63.4 amps of current, which is about 70% efficiency. So next up, we're gonna try the four ohm test. 1% THD, 40 hertz, and this is where it's rated 1200 watts. Again, between 11 and 14.5 volts, so we're gonna be right in there. You can see we got it, 1288 watts, 13.81. No surprises here, as it shouldn't be. 141.5 amps of current drawn. That's about 66% efficiency. We're hoping for a little bit better than that, but it is what it is. Two ohms, 1% THD at 40 hertz. Again, consistently rated 1200 watts, 1285, two ohms, 13.68 volts. Fluke says 153.3, 61.3% efficient. Dynamically at two ohms, we'll see if it puts out any more dynamic power. With the RIPS power supply, we don't really expect a lot of dynamic power from this amp uh, because of the way that the amp kind of clamps down the current but 1,352 watts at 13.59. And the current we're gonna see here is an inrush current, so this is not something you're gonna see consistently. 205.5 amps, which is a lot. All right, 12.12. 12. 
at 14.1. And again, the amp just kind of stopped at 127.4 amps of current. We didn't go into protect, but it um, just, the test just kind of stopped. It's like the amp stopped giving out any more power. Now let's try the dynamic test at 1.6 ohms, 40 hertz. You can see, whoa, we're close to 1500 watts, 1499. And there's the light show going on. <laughs> yeah, but 14.99 at 14.33 volts. And the inrush current, 203.4 amps of current. So now let's move on to the amp guts of this $1,100 JL audio amplifier. It's not easy to get into. I didn't really want to open it up too far, but you can see here a basic uh, overlay. It's kind of like two circuit boards squished together and uh, you can't really get into it very easily so I didn't open it up you can see the 16 volt 560 microfarad caps there and um, yeah just get an idea of the layout here of the amp but I uh, couldn't get inside of it so sorry about that but next up why is this amp so expensive I know you guys are gonna like man for 1100 bucks I can buy a 7k blah 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 brand yeah I'm kind of with you so JL Audio is kind of like the higher end of amplifiers Mercedes costs more than Hondas. BMWs cost more. Um, yeah, so they're, they're just known as a higher-end brand, and, and people who pay for it, they do pay the higher price. But yeah, this amp is made in China. JL, are you serious? Why couldn't you make this in the U.S.? <laughs> and no, friends, this is not a boss, and this is not a budget amp. The JL Audios have never been that way. But it made me think of something. When I got this amp that cost so much, I'm like, I've got a few other amps here. I bought a few of these and I had a, a few already. Let's compare all these different amps and see how they work in a daily driver. My daily driver is a 2008 Honda Accord EX, four door, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Have a JL Audio 10W7 and a factory ported enclosure in the trunk. And it actually sounds really good. And I thought, well, let's try this HD 1200 slash one in there and that's really the reason i bought the amp to use it in the car but then i thought well let's test some other amps what about the rockford fosgate t1500 bdcp this is a three ohm subwoofer so a lot of these amplifiers i'm talking about here are going to put out about the same power at three ohms maybe a little bit more the sound digital is one i was interested in the sd3000.1 evo this is a one ohm version so it does quite a bit less at three ohms you guys have already seen the tar amps md1800.1 kind of blew me away on the dyno but i'm curious how does it sound in the car and then lastly the rockville this is the marine version of the t2 this is a stereo amplifier but again it's rated right around 12 1300 watts at forums mono so you guys always see me do the amp dyno test but i really want to do some in-car test realistic using my ears and also using this ssa meter so let's do this. Future videos coming up. What do you say? Yeah, boy. Damn, shit, bro. Right, guys, I want to thank you as always for watching and supporting Old School Stereo Williston Audio Labs. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed. Until next time, I'm out of here. <laughs> Pop the fuse. Pop the fuse, big dummy. All right, <laughs> we'll try that again. All right, we have us a new fuse put into the Stinger fuse holder, 150 amp this time. And let's try the four ohm uncertified run again up to clipping, 40 hertz, JL Audio HD 1200 slash one.
1334 at 13.9 volts. Pulled 171.8 amps of current. Whew.